Naval combat has long been dominated by powerful guns, missiles and projectiles, slinging fire and steel towards the enemy. But the future of warfare at sea is looking a lot different, and a lot more high-tech. Submarines, drones and advanced directed energy weapons like lasers are becoming the new weapons of choice, ushering in a new age of naval conflict. At the center of this revolution is the clash between the United States and China, with both superpowers racing to deploy laser-armed aircraft carriers and revolutionary carrier killer missiles. Buckle up, because the future of naval warfare is here, and it's unlike anything we've ever seen before. It sounds like the stuff of science fiction directed energy lasers so powerful, they can track and incinerate targets moving at over 6,200 miles per hour, or Mach 10 speeds. Weapons capable of burning through reinforced missile components before they can even reach the ship. But this shocking new laser weapon technology is no longer just theoretical. The United States Navy is deadly serious about getting it deployed aboard its newest class of $13.3 billion supercarriers as quickly as possible. You see, the Pentagon is in an arms race against time itself to get these laser defenses operational and integrated with threat detection systems. Because on the other side of the Pacific, China has been going full tilt developing a new breed of specialized carrier killer missiles explicitly designed to take out American capital ships from over 1,000 miles away using sheer kinetic energy alone. These DFZF hypersonic gliders from China have been clocked at mind-bending velocities over 10 times the speed of sound. They can zigzag erratically and pull extreme aerodynamic maneuvers that make them virtually impossible to track or intercept with conventional missile defenses. And now they pose a very real existential threat to the massive floating airfields that have long enabled the US Navy to project power and influence across the globe. The Navy's solution to neutralize this overhead hypersonic missile threat? Mount high-energy free electron lasers using shipboard nuclear reactors. Laser cannons essentially powered by the same physics that runs nuclear submarines and spacecraft. By rapidly heating up critical components, these lasers could cripple or divert incoming hypersonic kills before they ever reach the carrier's outer defense perimeters. It's the start of a new era of high-tech laser warfare on the high seas. To truly grasp what's at stake in this laser weapon arms race, we must first deeply examine the sheer scale and cutting-edge capabilities of the American aircraft carriers at the center of this technological showdown. Leading the charge is the first-in-class $13.3 billion USS Gerald R. Ford CVN-78, the single most expensive warship ever constructed. This floating warcraft is an astounding engineering achievement. Measuring nearly a quarter mile long at 1,106 feet, with a massive five-acre flight deck capable of carrying over 75 aircraft, comprising four strike fighter squadrons and multiple logistics and support squadrons. The Ford's embarked air wing alone surpasses the entire military air power of most nations on the planet. But the Gerald R. Ford class is much more than just a bigger aircraft carrier. It represents a revolutionary leap in integrated naval warfare systems, packed stem to stern with technologies designed to maintain American maritime dominance for decades to come. One of the most significant upgrades is the electromagnetic aircraft launch system, EMAILS, replacing the traditional steam-driven catapults used on previous carrier classes. EMAILS uses a revolutionary linear induction motor to generate an electromagnetic force that accelerates aircraft more smoothly and with less mechanical stress compared to the violent launch dynamics of older systems. This enhances aircraft lifespan and allows for smoother, higher acceleration launches of vehicles too lightweight for conventional catapults like unmanned drones. Working in tandem with EMAILS, is the Advanced Arresting Gear, AAG, an innovative energy-absorbing design using new electromagnetic towing force systems rather than hydraulics to trap and seamlessly recover aircraft on approach to the deck. Unlike the jarring impact of hydraulic systems, the AAG system is computer-controlled for smoother trapping with reduced shock and vibration transmitted to the airframe. Then we come to the truly game-changing sensor and networking suite of the Ford class. The ship is outfitted with the state-of-the-art dual-band radar, DBR, consolidating and combining multiple conventional radar arrays into a single compact system using both X-band and S-band transceivers. The DBR features an electronically scanned active array with no moving parts, 
reducing maintenance costs and manning requirements. But the true power comes from the DBR's ability to seamlessly interface with Ford's integrated computing system, creating a unified network for coordinated tracking, engagement, and response to threats from a single centralized control center. Underpinning all of these advanced systems is the CVN-78's nuclear power plant. The Ford is powered by two newly designed A1B nuclear reactors, generating a world-leading three terawatts of electrical output, nearly three times the total output of previous Nimitz-class carriers. This colossal energy reserve, besides propelling the ship at speeds over 30 knots, crucially provides enough power for future high-energy laser weapon systems. Which brings us to the main event, the laser beam weapons the Navy is vigorously developing to leverage all that free electrical capacity. The technological centerpiece is the Free Electron Laser, FEL, an entirely new class of laser using a radically different operating mechanism compared to traditional chemically powered laser devices. FELs work by accelerating a beam of high energy free electrons to relativistic speeds, then oscillating them through a periodic arrangement of alternating magnets called an undulator. As the electrons wiggle through the magnetic fields, they emit extremely intense, coherent laser light that is exponentially amplified into an extremely powerful, focused beam. FEL devices are effectively laser weapons powered by nuclear reactors rather than chemical fuel. But FELs aren't just brighter and more powerful than their chemical laser counterparts. They offer tremendous strategic advantages like near instantaneous refiring without needing to replenish fuel or cool down periods. The immense onboard reactor output of the Ford provides a virtually unlimited power reserve to continually operate and re-fire the laser at high repetition rates. Most crucially though, FELs could finally offer an effective countermeasure to the greatest emerging threat to US naval forces, hypersonic anti-ship missiles, and glide vehicles. You see, conventional anti-air missile interceptors simply aren't fast enough to realistically track and engage these hypersonic threats, which can perform unpredictable evasive zigzag maneuvers at over 5,000 miles per hour. FELs, on the other hand, operate at the true speed of light, over a million times faster than these ultra-high velocity targets. By rapidly heating and thermally damaging critical components as the target enters their laser optics field of view, these beam weapons could potentially cripple, divert, or even completely destroy incoming hypersonic threats before they reach the ship. This strategic capability to neutralize hypersonic carrier-killer missile threats is a big part of why the Navy has designed the Ford class around integrating laser weapons from conception. Features like redesigned advanced weapons elevators more efficiently move heavy laser system components between the armory deck and operational firing positions. It's all part of a unified, multi-layered effort to defend America's multi-billion dollar naval investment against the new breed of game-changing Chinese hypersonic missiles. While still in testing and developmental phases, the combination of emails, AAG, DBR slash OA nav networking, and reactor-powered FEL systems gives the USS Gerald R. Ford and her successors a powerful and comprehensive answer to 21st century maritime threats. But is this bleeding edge tech enough to decisively counter the Chinese carrier killer threat looming on the horizon? Only time will tell in this high stakes showdown over the future of naval warfare. No doubt the technological marvels packed into the Gerald R. Ford class certainly sound impressive on paper, but successfully integrating defensive laser systems and getting them operational is one thing. Ensuring they can effectively counter China's new breed of specialized carrier killer weapons is another immense challenge entirely. For years now, China has been increasingly vocal about protesting the United States naval presence around its coastlines and contested island claims in the Pacific. It's no secret that a central focus of their military industrial complex has been dedicated to developing powerful anti-ship missiles and supporting technologies designed from the ground up to target and neutralize American supercarriers like the Ford. We're talking about some truly intimidating and formidable weapons systems here. Take the DF-21D anti-ship ballistic missile, for instance. A massive 35-foot-long 60-ton behemoth with an estimated range of over 1,000 miles. Armed with a maneuverable re-entry vehicle and terminal guidance systems, it represents a serious threat even to the most advanced Aegis combat systems. 
But the DF-21D looks almost conventional compared to China's other next-generation anti-ship missiles currently in development and testing, like the exotic DFZF hypersonic glide vehicle. Capable of blistering Mach 10 plus speeds over 6,200 miles per hour and unpredictable evasive maneuvering, this is the kind of hypersonic threat that could realistically punch through typical missile defense systems. Crucially, the DFZF and other emerging Chinese hypersonic gliders are designed to be zigzagging, ultra-high velocity threats capable of punishing marine targets with kinetic energy alone. No need for conventional explosives. Their hypersonic speeds make them extremely difficult to track and intercept. This is precisely where the vulnerability of even the most advanced surface combatants like the Ford starts to emerge. While defensive systems like RIM-162 evolved Sea Sparrow missiles and radar-guided phalanx CIWS Gatling guns might protect against more conventional anti-ship threats, these hypersonic and highly maneuverable Chinese rockets represent a new class of challenge. They have legitimate potential to land devastatingly accurate strikes on multi-billion dollar capital ships, the very core of America's power projection capabilities. So in that sense, successfully developing Integrating and fielding new directed energy laser defense systems isn't just a capability upgrade for the U.S. Navy. It's becoming an existential necessity if they hope to preserve their global maritime freedom of movement and force projection in the face of China's rapidly modernizing anti-access-slash-area denial arsenal. Because if these laser defenses being developed for the Ford prove unable to reliably track, disrupt, divert, or defeat threats like the DFZF and other hypersonic gliders and ballistic missiles, America's virtually untouchable supercarriers could suddenly become extremely vulnerable. $13 billion capital investments meant to underpin US dominance for 50 years could be rendered extremely high-risk assets against China's new countermeasures. So, while the Navy's shift towards integrating reactor-powered free electron lasers and advanced sensors is clearly an innovative approach to defeat emerging offensive weapons, it remains to be seen if this speculative technology can effectively tip the balance back in America's favor. Neutralizing the very real threat posed by China's hypersonic carrier killer missiles may end up determining the laser beam's future effectiveness and by extension, the fate of how U.S. force projection and sea control continues to evolve heading deeper into this century of strategic competition. While the U.S. Navy is focused on developing powerful laser defenses against hypersonic missile threats, it's not just a one-way technological arms race. China has their own ambitious goals to mount offensive laser weapon systems aboard the next generation of powerful indigenous aircraft carriers. Leading this charge is the in-development Type 003 Fujian aircraft carrier, set to rival and even exceed the capabilities of the United States Ford class when it eventually enters service. With an estimated displacement of over 88,000 tons when fully loaded, the Fujian will be the largest warship ever constructed for the Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy plan. It boasts an enormous flight deck over 320 meters long and 76 meters wide providing enough area to simultaneously handle over 40 aircraft comprising its full air wing. But sheer size is just the start. The Fujian represents a monumental leap in Chinese carrier capabilities, packing an array of advanced integrated systems clearly influenced by studying American and other Western naval technologies. Perhaps its most significant upgrade is the incorporation of not just one, but three separate electromagnetic aircraft launch systems akin to the Ford's emails. These advanced catapult systems will allow the Fujian to rapidly launch fixed-wing aircraft over a wide range of weights and configurations. The Fujian will also benefit from a combined integrated full electric propulsion system made up of turbo-electric transmission systems capable of channeling over 200,000 horsepower across four shafts. This will provide tremendous electrical output to power the advanced sensors and facilities aboard the ship. Which brings us to perhaps the most concerning development for American naval planners, how explicitly this new class of Chinese supercarrier is being engineered from the ground up to seamlessly integrate modern directed energy weapon systems like high-powered lasers. You see, laser air defenses could solve a major vulnerability as China's carrier groups begin operating farther from shore, 
protecting the Fujian's accompanying surface ships against American aircraft and incoming anti-ship missiles. Laser close-in defensive batteries could potentially burn through or divert incoming threats that penetrate through outer missile defense layers. So in a sense, the Fujian seems purpose-built to give the Chinese an extra layer of defensive counterpunch options in conflicts at sea. Between new hypersonic anti-ship carrier killer missiles designed to target US supercarriers at extreme range, their own massive aircraft carriers approaching American scale, and now directed energy laser defenses, China is methodically assembling a 360-degree anti-access-slash-area-denial lattice. The goal appears to be threatening US Navy surface forces enough to limit their power projection effectiveness in regional conflicts while simultaneously expanding China's ability to control and dominate actions within their extending defensive perimeter. It's a multi-layered effort to neutralize America's decades-old naval supremacy. With both superpowers clearly committed to this high-stakes game of leapfrogging naval laser technologies, a potential flashpoint clash feels increasingly inevitable. One where the future of global maritime dominance, regional spheres of influence, and by extension overall military primacy could hinge on which nation's capital ships reign supreme in beam-on-beam -beam laser engagements. The outcomes of these still theoretical laser shootouts between American and Chinese supercarriers may very well determine which nation's fleet, and by extension which economic political ideology, continues as the predominant force for shaping the international order, heading deeper into the 21st century's great power competition. No one can say for certain how this situation will shake out. While the technological innovations are undoubtedly impressive, the true impact of laser weapons still remains largely theoretical and untested in real naval combat scenarios. There's also the question of defensive countermeasures that could diminish these systems before they ever leave the shipyard. Laser beam attenuation from atmospheric conditions or obscuring smoke and debris could pose major hurdles. And let's not forget the possibility of electronic warfare attacks interfering with the incredibly complex array of networked systems underpinning these laser defenses. But despite all these unanswered questions, one thing is clear. Powerful laser beam weaponry is coming to naval warfare one way or another. America and China are both maneuvering to be at the forefront of this revolution, and the power to control the maritime domain in the coming decades will hinge on their success. The Ford-class laser defense systems, hypersonic missiles, Chinese carrier developments, they all represent just the opening salvos in a technological arms race that will shape the hierarchy of nations for the rest of the 21st century. Will America's investment in directed energy laser weapon systems like free electron lasers be enough to maintain naval superiority in the 21st century? Or will China's aggressive development of killer weapons like the hypersonic DFZF prove unstoppable? Leave a comment down below and let us know where you stand. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell icon to stay up to date on all the latest revelations in the fascinating world of military aviation.